Hello everyone and welcome to our session today on setting up security in a few hours with easy security. Joining us today is Per Mogensen from Merge Tool. And before I pass it over to Pear, I would like to remind you that the session is being recorded and it will be posted to our on-demand webinar library later this week for you to review and share with anyone. And if you do have any questions, please don't hesitate to type those into the questions box and we will get those called out at the end of the presentation. So now I'll pass it over to Pear and he'll kick off our presentation. Thank you, Andy. Yeah, I'll be talking about uh, a feature today in the easy security solution we have uh, that allows you to set up security uh, within hours, uh, actually. We refer to it as quick security. And combined with some of the field level security features, uh, you can actually uh, get a lot of things done in a very, very short time. I want to go through first a few things. Um, uh, about our application in here, but then I will actually switch to the latest version of NAV Business Central, uh, and I will show our application uh, inside uh, that um, version of NAV. Basically, we have two solutions as part of uh, easy security. One is for login and permissions, uh, and it is a set of tools for the standard NAV security, uh, simplifying it uh, quite a lot but also allowing a lot of reporting for segregation of duties and similar issues um, when auditors ask for that. That solution is uh, solving uh, many issues. Uh, after you upgrade, uh, a lot of new things are introduced by Microsoft. You maybe even switch uh, to a different uh, ISV solution for certain things. And a lot of security can't really be moved forward. Uh, even between the later versions, Microsoft introduced more than 100 tables every time. And existing security will be very hard to reuse. Uh, also for new installs, of course, uh, it's also interesting to use this solution because it really can make security in a very fast way. And you don't have to go live with super users. The other part is what we call field level uh, and data security, and that enhances the normal NAV security. Normally, you can only control if people can modify a customer or not. We can actually control it so you can set individual fields that cannot be accessed or even hide information in them. This part of our solution does make changes to the code, but that's basically a wizard uh, that makes the changes and it also removes the changes. So it's very different than actually having a traditional customization done. You don't have to consider it when you have to upgrade in the future, actually. We do have installation wizards. So whatever security setup you have right now, that will actually be the beginning point. And I'll be using Business Central today, but basically our application is available from 2.6 uh, in the classic world, uh, all the way to the latest uh, Business Central version um, that is running on premise. Login and permission are the tools for the normal NAV security. And uh, we use a lot of grouping to simplify the assignment to individual users in the system. We group both permission sets and we can group companies also. In that way, we make it quite simple uh, to assign security. Um, when you have a new person, you just pick customer service and uh, the company that should have access to. We can also deal with expiration date allowing a person to have access to um, certain features when somebody else is on vacation, and we will basically take it away afterwards. Quick security is what I'm going to concentrate about today, actually. And it is uh, where we, by simply denying access to security to certain things, uh, allow setup very quickly in there. Uh, and this both include data and objects. We have also created more than 100 permission sets, uh, and those ones are special, specially designed for segregation of duties. Uh, and they actually work in many versions of NAV, all from 2009 to the latest Business Central. Um, so using these will actually make an upgrade uh, a lot smoother, actually, if you redesign your security in your current version, using our permission sets and quick security, 
you could get very far uh, in a very short time when you actually upgrade. We also have an ability to record permissions, um, and the later versions of NAV have that too, but we actually extend it quite a lot, allowing to record a person in the current situation uh, with a permission error and temporarily assign them super, for example. Object level permission is a way to prevent people from seeing things, uh, and uh, that is an integrated part of our solution also, uh, removing access to financial information uh, like we see, uh, like you will see today, for example. We also have a lot of things about documenting security, uh, and that can both be for management uh, for your own purpose as maintaining it, uh, or it can be for auditors if necessary. Quick security is uh, the way to actually, in a few hours, uh, accomplish a lot of things with security. We built three levels of access, a reading, working, and super access. All this one being built simply by installing uh, and running our wizard. Then you can start denying things that you find important. Those two data, you can make it read only, or you can make certain things no access as if you had a payroll solution. We have actually found over 400 tables in NAV uh, that um, a user that only work in the system really don't need to change. It can be payment terms and all the posting groups, for example. And without doing anything, we will lock down those things for a working user. We also deal with the objects, and that's really how you get rid of all the things uh, that shows financial information. And as you see today, uh, it has a lot of nice things uh, working with the later versions also. Combining this one with the permission sets we deliver, uh, it makes uh, it much simpler to set up security in NAV. Uh, a lot of times you don't really need to build a single permission set. You just use uh, quick security and our data for a very large portion of your users, or even all of them. Field level and data security is a separate part of our solution, and it does work in parallel. So you can have um, access to modify the customer, but we'll be able to control which information you can modify. We can do uh, page level security. Maybe you want people to create orders, but you don't want them to create invoices and credit memos. So we'll make those pages read only, for example. We can also do field level security. On the customer, you want people to change the address and phone number, maybe, but you don't want them to change payment terms, salesperson, and credit limit, for example. We can also deal with all the actions. Um, being able to create a sales order. Permission are very similar to being able to release a sales order, but graying out the button, of course, prevent people from um, releasing the sales order. We also have an ability to hide a lot of things, and that is actually a great way of simplifying the system, uh, taking away a lot of the things that you don't want people uh, to see, maybe all the service management things that you're not using. You can do it one time, and you don't have to reconfigure uh, a whole bunch of role centers to actually do that. The last part of this solution is an ability to limit the data also. Uh, it's quite often used where you want maybe salespeople only to see orders for their location, maybe only that they are the salesperson on and things like that one. Or you could even allow people access to the chart of account, but you would apply a filter so they only saw uh, things related to their department, for example, uh, in the chart of account and pledge entries. But let me go ahead and show this instead in here. And I'll be using Business Central, but as I mentioned earlier, this one also works for the classic version of NAV um, in basically any version, as long as you use a 2.6 executable on new actually. I'll be looking a little about how we maintain logins, uh, but after that, I will quickly switch to show how we actually set up security very fast in here. I have a new user, John. I have no access I can see out here assigned to him. So as I go into uh, John, I wanna assign a group of permissions. Um, and I have created some groups here in my database, uh, one here called sales or customer service basically containing everything a person would need uh, 
to have work inside customer service they could get into a system uh, and all the different permission sets needed in here. We can also combine these groups together. Uh, so as you have built the lower level, now you want somebody that maybe is a manager for uh, several people. Uh, you can actually combine these together and add additional permissions, of course, in here. As I add this group sales, we actually do the same for companies in here. So if you have finance people that need to access three or four companies, you don't have to repeat all the security. You can actually build a group containing multiple companies if you want to in here. As I have assigned this security, when I now update my login, we calculate uh, what you would normally be maintaining, 30 combinations inside NAV. We also have something we call summary permission. That is basically what you typical will want to give to an auditor. What is the total access uh, in a table in a company for a user, for example? On top of that, we end up building something uh, we call it summer results. And that basically tells what function people can run in the system. These ones are created simply by recording a process. We can build these calculations. So you don't need to have <clears throat> any deep knowledge uh, to figure out to add additional ones. And it's all driven by data. So you can make anything you want without uh, programming anything, of course. Everything we do in our application uh, can be exported and imported. Uh, in that way, as you have finished setting up security in your test system, maybe during a upgrade, you get a first test database, you work on security. Now you get a final database and you have to move everything over. We can actually export and import anything you will see in our application today that actually is um, part of this one, uh, we will be able to export and import to a new database quite quickly out there. But the maintenance of login is uh, basically one side of our application. Um, the initial task of getting all the security built is the real tricky part. And that's why we have created what we call quick security. And you don't have to be using that in the long run. You don't have to be using it for all the people in an organization, but it basically gives you some security that works really fast and is very simple to uh, maintain and even in the future um, get more restrictive with. We have built three levels of access, working, reading, and super in here and also an object access. If I look at it right now, in standard uh, Business Central in here, or now 2019 or whatever it's called, uh, there's over 1400 table in the standard database. Uh, and you can see both the working, reading, and super basically has the same number of uh, records in here. The difference is, of course, what access you have. And as I look at it here, I can see I have a lot of tables where I only have read access. Uh, I have no insert, no modify, no delete out here. And that is what we have found kind of set up tables, things that people don't really need access to, uh, to just process documents. Then you come down to all the things necessary to work in NAV. And by default, everything has full access. This will also include ISV solutions, custom development. So if you don't do anything, it didn't matter how customized the NAV is, it will actually still work uh, with quick security in here. The super level in here is uh, a full access to the business application by default, but not an access to actually go in and add other users, uh, change company names, and do the technical things related to NAV. So it's an accounting super uh, access in here. There's over four and a half thousand objects in the latest version of NAV. And you can see all of them will by default be included in here. But all this is actually controlled from a single uh, record in here. So the only reason payment terms showed up uh, read only was that there was a record in here said that table should be treated on as read only in here for a working user. So you can actually even relax that where you maybe need people to actually add uh, new countries in here, for example, you can actually reverse this change in here or this default. So you can open up for a table if you want to. But now you can go down and take the things you care about. 
And by default, you can work in the system. But if I want to control who is posting, I will make one table read only in here. And now I need to give another permission set for people to post in here. I maybe also want to control my primary master data, customer, vendor, and items, and the whole document flow, um, the four tables associated with that, I will make those read only also. If I want to lock down the journal lines uh, as my initial settings also, I will also go and make these two tables read only in here. I have now reduced permission on 10 tables. I would actually only need to build permission for those 10 tables. And as you will see later, those one really match the permission sets we actually deliver uh, or they can be used for it um, in there. You can also have things you don't even want people to see. So you maybe have payroll and that's actually a lot of information in the human resource area. And I will actually make all these things no access in here. Uh, this one will basically uh, take all these things related to human resource. And even for the super level uh, of quick security, they won't have access to it any longer. So that basically means, yeah, you can have these very high level access, but you can still take certain things away that are kind of only for a few people that maybe deals with payroll, for example. The other thing we do about uh, data, we can actually also do for the code in the system. So if you don't want people to see uh, the chart of account page, for example, I will go in and add my page number 16, the chart of account, and I'll make it with no access in here. So in this way, basically now people don't have access to that page any longer. Uh, they have access to every other page, including ISV and customization, and new pages will automatically be added, but this page will actually not be there any longer. There's a lot more than a single page in the system that shows financial data, and we will actually scan the source code in a database as we install our solution. It's part of our install wizard. So we will know exactly uh, what reports and what pages in the system are using which data in here. So I can see in here my detailed trial balance, for example, is using both the GL account and GL entries. So if I want to remove financial data, I should probably get rid of that one also. We do have some simple functions up here where we have found the tables associated with financial information, like a lot of the entries, journal lines, budgets, account schedules, and a lot about the banking and cash management features in NAV. So now I have a list of reports and pages that is actually using some of these tables that I want to uh, prevent people from seeing, from uh, accessing financial information. All those ones, I'll make no access in here. And I had four and a half thousand objects or more than that in my database. I actually only have around 250 that shows financial information. So I don't care about the rest of them. People can see that data but I now took the financial information away from people uh, not being able to see that. So I have made these changes in here uh, and all I have done until this point has actually been offline. So I wanna go here and start what we call publish of permission. You will basically recalculate uh, quick security based on the settings and add new tables and pages and things like that. And then it will push the information into uh, the normal NAV security tables out there. Um, in the meantime, when this one is running, I go into login as a different user in here. I have a user that has been set up for the working access. Um, so I will go ahead and lock in as that person as this one actually uh, works here in the background. So I'm now locked in with the original quick security access in here. So if I go uh, and take a look at my list of customers, for example, uh, I have uh, access to change my customers. That was uh, set to full access initially in here, of course. 
So I can go change the salesperson uh, to something else, uh, and I can go save this change, of course, in the database. I have the full access. But if I wanted to actually go and add myself as a salesperson um, and try add it in here, it will be one of those tables where I only have read access to, so I can't add it. And 2018 and Business Central behaves a little different than older version. It won't allow you to create the record and then give you an error. Uh, it actually tests the security early when you try to do these functions. That's why it didn't even allow me in here. If I go look at the human resource area, I will see right now I have a whole list of menu items, of course, because by default, I have full access to work in that area also. If I go look at financial management, I can see the chart of accounts. I can go drill down on uh, these uh, numbers in here and see the general ledger entries. That is basically because I only need a read permission to this. And there's really no way to avoid people having read permission uh, to the general ledger information if you can post anything. But as you will see when it's done publishing, uh, I will basically lose that access uh, to the page. I won't lose access to the data because I need that, but I won't be able to see the or execute the page any longer. What it's doing right now, it's calculating uh, permission sets in here. Uh, so if there were new changes in the database, it would actually add those ones automatically in here. It will, uh, after it's done that, uh, it will create a restore point. Uh, it will be a snapshot of the current security. So if I end up having all kinds of problems after deploying the new security. I really don't have to dump soup on everyone to be able to get them to do their work. I can roll back their previous permission uh, by simply using these restore point that has been created in here uh, during the publish process. The actual writing of the permissions are really short and we don't change how security is enforced. So if you have other systems used for documenting security, it will work exactly the same way uh, as it used to be in here, um, but it will be uh, based on the regular permissions. And we can also use our reporting against that if necessary in here. So the actual writing here will be really short. It will only be the few changes uh, to the data in here. And uh, I should be able to um, now see how my new security actually ends up applying in there. So the permission has been published. As I go back to my user David, I see that I don't have execute access any longer uh, to my chart of account, so I can't get in there any longer. If I uh, try budgets, I will see the same. But one of the nice things with 2015 and later is when I actually reconnect to my server, it will calculate my department menu, my role center based on my current permissions. So if I don't have access to execute the objects or I don't have access to the data, I'll actually not see it in here. So going back to uh, my um, financial management general ledger, I don't have chart of account any longer. If I go search for chart of account, I don't see it either, of course, because it's not in my role center and it's not in my uh, department menu. Even going to navigate and doing one of the standard tricks to get around the system is to go search without having a document number. If I try to drill down, again, I don't have the execute permission. I cannot see the data any longer. So. This one allows quite an easy way to actually set up the security in NAV uh, and in that way, uh, being able to gradually go and improve on it in here. The other thing is those things I actually ended up limiting in here. Uh, we have created a whole list of permission sets opening up for typically a single task in the system. And I want to show them here in a spreadsheet because they're organized by functional errors instead. But basically, um, for master data, we will have a view, edit, and create level. We will be able to view documents, create the individual documents, only post a shipment, only post an invoice, and so on in here. Also, individual permission sets using the different journals, for example. 
We have done the same for purchase payable. We have done it for finance, uh, and we have done it for inventory down here. It is not 100% of the NAV application, of course, but it's all the places where money is involved and typically the places you initially want to go and lock down. Plus, Microsoft also have permission sets, and especially for the newer parts of the application, um, it will be manufacturing, warehouse, service management, and so on. The permission sets are actually better and not kind of an either or, everything or nothing uh, kind of version in there. We also have role center uh, permission sets, allowing you to see a lot of things if you have the role center, but needing the task, of course, to perform uh, a creation of a new customer. All this makes it quite easy to actually, even without knowing a lot about uh, NAV and uh, how the system works in general, you can actually go in and audit security quite easily, or you can have management decide how security is to be and then you can easily deploy that. Everything in this one is basically a group in our system. And in that way, it makes it quite easy to uh, go deploy it. Or even in the future, when somebody says, no, we need to have edit on the or create on the customers. All you have to do is just add one uh, record in the group. And now people have that access, of course. So all this one is what we refer to as our lock-in and permission. And we have a lot of customers that within a few days of learning and have finished training in our application, are able to actually set up security that they don't really have to touch uh, for a go live or an upgrade, for example. The other part are those things where normal security is not really enough. If I looked at my customer, there was a lot of fields on the customer in there. And you maybe want people to change information like phone number, address, and things like that one in here. But you don't really want them uh, to change the credit limit and balance uh, or see the balance. But there's not a lot of difference, or there is no difference between the fields for normal NAV security. But our field level security allow you to set up uh, an additional level in here. It has a lot of defaults. So if I actually go in and add the blank user, I, I will see I get the read only access in here. Now going back to my list of customers, it has now grayed out all the menu items. And if I look at a single customer, I can't see any, or I can see everything, but I can't change anything any longer. It is all locked down uh, because it's now read only. And all my menu items are of course grayed out in here. I can then open up for myself. And if I go add myself in here as a user, I can make the pages look normal, of course. Uh, but I want to do a very simple setup in here where I actually uh, want to allow myself to change the address. And in that way, uh, I'll be able to change some fields, uh, but not all of them in here. First, all pages showing um, the customer table is set to view in here. But I will then make the things that are exceptions, uh, like my customer card. I want to leave that editable. My customer statistics, I don't even want people to see that. So I'm going to make it hidden in here. On my customer card, we can look at the details. And now we get down to the field level. And I would say every field in here should be view. I will then go add the fields that I want people to change, the address to the phone number, for example, in here. And those ones I want to make editable. So again, I create a default and I only make the exceptions in here. We can also take information away. So there's a couple of fields showing something about balance. And all those ones, I actually want to go uh, hide in here. So as of now, uh, and exceptions for those ones, I can hide those ones. The ribbon contain actions. And again, actions, we want to do a default. So I'm actually going to hide all of them by default. And I will then add a few of them back, like the contacts, the statistics, um, the common, the ledger entries, and the ship to addresses, for example. So now I'm only adding a few things back, um, and I took all of the other ones away in here. We can also make things like the ledger entries gray out, so I won't be able to click on it any longer, 
but I can still see the button you know, up there. Could be a case for the release button on a sales order, for example. But I created this new uh, field level security code. And as I now get in, open up my customer, I will see a very simplified ribbon. I have very few things left up here. If I click on statistics, I even get an error that I actually can't view that page. And I'm actually a super user. If I look at the fields, I can see the address is now editable in here. And my balance field disappeared up here. So in that way, I have both been hiding information, but I also opened up so people can change a few things, but not credit limit and salesperson, for example, uh, that I maybe want to protect in here. So that's part of the other half of our solution in here, um, what we call field level and data security. We can also limit the records people can see if you only want people to see sales orders for their location, for example, in here. But this one allowed me in a very short time, uh, less than 15 minutes to actually accomplish many things that are typically when you install or, or upgrade NAV that, yeah, you don't want to have super tight security, but you want some security. And if you don't even do anything and just deploy the working level quick security, you actually end up having uh, quite good security in the system uh, and all your setup uh, protected at that point. We sell our solution in two parts, login and permissions and field level. Uh, and this one has a, a price of $2,500 each of them. If you get the complete solution, uh, that's actually a little saving. So it's $4,500. I would say more than 80% of our customers uh, actually do buy the complete solution because it complement each other really well uh, at that point. But you don't have to get login and permissions if you already have security with the regular NAV. Uh, you can just get our field level and data security. On top of this, there's also uh, the 16% enhancement as Microsoft normally charges. Uh, we charge the same thing in here. And we do offer uh, a fixed price training also. We have over 1,000 customers. Um, that use our solution uh, across the world. Uh, and we have trained more than 200 in North America, actually. So we have quite a lot of knowledge about what our solution actually can do in here. I have been showing, uh, especially the quick security part and how you would field level can also accomplish a lot of things very fast. Uh, but there's a lot more um, information, including case studies on our website. Um, and if you want a more detailed uh, information, uh, you should contact your NAV partner because they will be able to supply you with uh, or set up a demo where you can also ask a lot of questions and we can make one that makes uh, the features you find important uh, be the highlight of our demo also in here, of course. So, um, but that was prayer what I wanted to show here today. And I don't know if anyone have any questions out there. Thank you, Pear. Uh, we did have a question, but I believe you covered it. Um, it was asked to go over the pricing. Yeah, so uh, yeah, it's basically uh, two parts. It didn't matter how many users you have. And even if you have multiple NAV installs in many countries, we do have a volume discount also. And I think our uh, training is not on here. But it's actually also done for a fixed price um, of $1,500 also um, for the complete solution also. That includes the first year support also. Okay. Well, I believe that was the only question that we had for today. Please feel free to contact us or the team at Merge Tool, and uh, they will discuss any other questions that you have. So thank you, Pear, for presenting today and to everyone on today's call, or if you're watching on demand, thank you for joining us. We do have a few more webinars coming soon. Actually, this afternoon at 1 p.m. Central, we have Daniel Palmer from Inovia Consulting presenting on creating and using a new production BOM. And we have Richard Pedigo from Calumo presenting on how you can tune up your ERP system 
with Corporate Performance Management. That webinar will be on Wednesday, February 13th. And FOCUS is coming up in Houston, Texas. FOCUS is a Dynamic Communities User Group. User groups from Dynamics 365 AX, CRM, BC Nav, and Power Platform are the world's most influential user group communities of technology users and partners. So to learn more about FOCUS and to get all the details for this conference, you can visit our conference page on our website. That's anovia.com slash conferences. And so if you're interested in that, um, you can register. And then we have our annual Anovia Customer Conference coming up in April in the Wisconsin Dells. Contact your rep or visit our conference page where it will have all of the details of our conference. We would love to have you attend, so register now. The hotel rooms are going fast. Thank you again, everyone, for joining. Thank you, Pear, for presenting. And we look forward to seeing you again soon on another Anovia webinar. Have a great day, everyone.